What's up, man? I saw got chocolate box, chocolate drop. T.S. Green in the building, man. I saw got. <laughs> Welcome to another fascinating edition of The Chocolate Box Presents. Our guest, uh, I'm Willie Royal, the guest host, and today we have, the, uh, we have the benefit of interviewing members of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, uh, Beta New Lambda chapter, and their title is Guardians of the Queen City. And so with me today is Brother Sam Smith, who is working political action. Uh, Brother Jarrell Harvey, the president of the chapter, and Brother Brian Cyprian Botillion. And he's going to tell us what that means in just a bit. Gentlemen, what I'd like to do, we're, we're in about a half hour uh, interview and uh, it's going to move pretty quickly. What I'd like to do is to tell the story of the fraternity in general and then talk about uh, this chapter in particular, and this is a graduate chapter, yes? That's correct. correct. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the history of not just Alpha Phi Alpha, but the history of black uh, Greek letter uh, fraternal organizations in general. Uh, who wants to start us off? Why the need for black uh, Greek letter organizations? Sure. I I can start off. I think one of the sure. things is, especially for Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, it was founded on a predominantly white institution at Cornell University. So this was an opportunity for people to have a common bond socially, not to feel isolated during that time frame. Now, uh, not only were they able to study together, to learn, to, to have that bond uh, of brotherhood or sisterhood, but it also created even bigger outside of the undergraduate standpoint, uh, a community. So then it became mm -hmm. civic awareness. Certain national programs were implemented to where those who were educated could go back into the community and provide insight to those who may not have that knowledge. Uh, so it was a way of kind of giving back and doing more throughout the greater society rather than just on a college campus. One of the things I know that uh I'm not a member of a fraternity, mm -hmm. although I aspire to be, actually, mm -hmm. Alpha Phi Alpha <laughs> at some point. But one of the things I heard was that there typically is a historian uh, role mm -hmm. or whatever. So speaking of history, <coughs> what year was that uh, in Cornell? The, so, yeah, the fraternity was founded in, in 1906. It was December 4th, 1906, mm -hmm. so um, over 100 years. Um, and then here locally in the Charlotte area, our Beta New Lambda chapter, was founded in 1939. And so over 80 years that we've been serving uh, the Queen City proudly as the guardians of the Queen City. Okay, and so <clears throat> the reason I asked that question about what year, it now tells me a lot, lot about the adversity, mm -hmm. the, the, the challenge of black folk uh, being uh, allowed to uh, become students on some of those major, or even not just major universities, any university. And the hostile environment, uh, right, uh, just uh, in terms of safety, but also in terms of study, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's, uh, that's one of the reasons I, that I kind of asked that. So, okay, it started, it, it found it there, and how did it grow? How did it proliferate? How quickly was that, did that process happen? It actually started, you know, pretty quickly. Um, they started um, the, the next school after um, at Cornell University. They actually went to an HBCU at Howard University. And so that was the second university that was chartered. Um, and then they went to uh, Virginia Union. And it just continued to spread, you know, to other universities ac across the country because, as Brother Cyprian mentioned, many other students on, you know, predominantly white campuses, even the HBCU, saw the need for collaboration, the network, and just to be able to have a bond with like-minded people. And so it really started to grow out like wildfire. Today we have over 700 um, chapters um, within Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. And so, you know, it's continued to grow. And just a few years ago, we actually was able to um, charter a chapter here in Charlotte, North Carolina with Johnson and Wells. And so as a graduate chapter, we actually support 
four different undergraduate chapters. Those chapters being in the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, um, Johnson and Wales, as I've mentioned, Johnson C. Smith University, as well as Davidson College. Mm -hmm. You mentioned graduate chapters. <clears throat> so there, there are graduate chapters and undergraduate chapters. So what's the difference? So for those undergraduate chapters, those are primarily located on your campuses of universities. So some members may be initiated uh, on the undergraduate level. Some may come through what we would call an alumni. So alumni is basically usually tied to a city. There may be multiple chapters in a city, but it's usually tied to a city. Mm. And it really just changes on the types of activities that are conducted. Uh, your community service is probably on a broader scale in an alumni chapter as opposed to maybe undergraduate uh, on the focus. But we have very similar national programs. Uh, go to high school, go to college. A voteless people is a hopeless people. A number of those are the same throughout. Uh, and then there are joint events. So we meet on a district, regional, and a, a general or national convention level to where you meet alphas uh, throughout the country, throughout the world. Okay, okay, very good. Um, I'm an educator. And I like to talk to, I like to, 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 to focus most of the conversation towards uh, kids who are aspiring to go to college and whether it's a, a trade school or a two-year college or a four-year institution or whatever. Uh, talk a little bit about, I know you're a graduate, but mm -hmm. talk a little bit about some of the benefits of uh, undergraduates joining a, a, a fraternal organization. I think it goes back to that initial stance of that common bond socially, right? So yeah. you have some individuals who are very like-minded, some young aspiring individuals who want to maybe participate in certain things. For instance, as an undergraduate, uh, in many, not only Alpha Phi Alpha, but many other fraternities, you're competing against other chapters, so to mm -hmm. speak, whether that's at a state or district level, regional or uh, national level. And in those instances, it may be an oratorical <laughs> competition. It may be scholarships. So it allows you to get the opportunity to compete amongst your own, to, to learn from your mistakes because uh, it's constructive feedback, but it's in a family environment, if that makes sense. Uh, additionally, um, there, in addition to those competitions, there are also this uh, bridge program. There's a lot of individuals, brothers who are older, who are established in their careers, who are looking for interns, career shadow opportunities to bring those individuals who are aspiring to maybe pursue the similar career. So much of that networking um, is really what makes people gravitate towards some of these organizations. Yeah. Sam, talk to me about uh, something uh, that uh, is near and dear, dear to your heart. Uh, why did you, gra did you join the undergraduate chapter graduate. or you joined graduate? Mm -hmm. Why? Um, for me, it was, a, it was always a passion. Um, I was born in Moravia, Liberia. When I came to this country at a very early age, a lot of the um, men that I gravitated to um, growing up were all alphas. Um, I saw how they carry themselves. I saw how they uh, position themselves in the community. Domestically or? Domestically, yeah, okay. here in the States. Okay. Um, I saw how they carry themselves, how they, how they kept their, head, their heads high as men. Um, and I always said that I wanted, to, I aspire to be like them. Um, so when the opportunity came for me to be a part of this great fraternity, um, I took advantage of it. Um, you mentioned something about stewardship. So before um, I um, had a pleasure of being a part of this fraternity, um, I was stewarded by the men of Alpha Phi Alpha throughout this community in Charlotte. Um, whether it's through their community service projects that you know they will reach out and say, "Hey, get involved with this project so you can get to know." Um, other brothers, or if it was an opportunity to volunteer um, uptown in the homeless um, um, encampments, or at one of the churches that we that we work with, where we're preparing um, um, used clothing to give to the to the um, less fortunate uh, community. So they they steward me in, and I and it just really just validated why for me I wanted to be an alpha man. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. <clears throat> And I'm going to throw this out just to the, to the table in general, and, and, and all of you want to participate in this, this little bit of, of opportunity to brag. Name some famous alphas. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall. Okay. People always talk about Dr. Martin Luther King, um, but yeah. some other even ones are like uh, you know, Jesse Owens, 
is, is another you know one that I'm proud of. Um, John Johnson, from a business standpoint, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so I mean, there's there's a ton of I mean, we can probably go on and from, on from athletes, from, from athletes to athletes. politicians yeah. to That's right. you know, you name it. Uh, if you, if you watch the show Power Ghost, he's an alpha. Um, okay, what's his name? Um, Omar. Omar. Yeah. Um, Omar. Hardwick. Hardwick. Yeah. Hardwick. yeah. Hardwick. He's okay. the alpha. So. Okay. So a lot of us out here. Yeah. So I mean, you talk about education. I mean, we probably have the most uh, college university, uh, you know, presidents. And so there are, you know, so many different schools that have uh, alpha men as, uni you know, university presidents, you yeah. know, pastors, teachers. Um, they mentioned, you know, politics. And so, I mean, we're, you know, far spread out um, in so many different industries. And, and that's the great thing about, you know, being in what I call like a brotherhood such as this. Yeah. You know, you have so many different skill sets and, and different things that you bring to the table, um, you know, different very backgrounds that really, you know, bring add value to this chapter or even to this fraternity, I should say. Yeah. Now you mentioned something, you mentioned brotherhood. I look at our challenges, I look at our history, mm -hmm. I look at our history in this country, and I look at the challenges that have, uh, that have persisted and accelerated, and I look at, at our, I just look at our struggles now, and I think of the role, just that the black men were typically uh, not allowed to build uh, relationships, positive relationships and so forth. And it seems to me that the fraternal organization allows that type of uh, encouragement of brothers developing positive relationships together. Talk about that a little bit. What does that mean on a personal level to, to be in an organization that, that encourages that type of uh, uh, bonding, uh, not, not so much so for partying or whatever, but mm -hmm professional networking and, and even encouragement uh, to, to do better. Anybody have a story about that? Well, I think relationships are very important and the older you get the more difficult they are to make. So I think once you have this bond, uh, a personal relationship for me is as I've moved to different cities, one of the first things I'll do is look out the local chapter mm. because I know I'll have something in common. We may have different personalities but I know some generalities are going to be the same. So that's one way to, number one, get entrenched in the community to understand what's going on. So that's a huge benefit. Yeah. From a support standpoint, uh, as you get older, especially as men, sometimes you don't really want to communicate your struggles or your challenges, especially with people you may not fully trust. Yeah. This creates an opportunity because, as I mentioned, I keep going back to the common bond socially. You've kind of gone through similar things. You understand a certain history. You're, you're strategically aligned in terms of what you believe and a mission for what the fraternity organization is doing. Uh, that's very important. And from a career standpoint, uh, people transition jobs, they relocate, uh, and sometimes it's challenging, it may be laid off. So it's always, you may get an email like, hey, looking for this, I'm a project manager. And brothers try to help connect them. Because uh, some jobs aren't posted externally. Sometimes mm -hmm. there are only internal postings. And Absolutely. you need to know someone to prepare yourself for that, so. Absolutely. That, that, that was a follow-up question I was going to ask. Is the networking thing real or is that kind of, uh, is, that, is, that, is that a real thing that happens in fraternities and sororities or black I, fraternities and sororities? Does that work? I would say it's, it's definitely real and it's encouraged. Um, I know for me, um, there's a slogan that we have in, in, in our fraternity that says he's not heavy, he's my brother. I know for me, I can call on any of these men, these alpha men, um, whenever I'm in, in a struggle. Um, if Brother Brian said it perfectly well, if I'm in a position where I'm looking for work, mm -hmm. I can call him and say, hey, these are my skills and I have been laid off or whatever the case is. Could you, ne could you connect me or direct me in the right place? Uh, we do have a lot of undergrad brothers who once they graduate, they are looking for work yeah. and they lean on us um, in, the, in, the, in the graduate chapters to kind of help them navigate that pipeline because yeah. most of them are still young and, and trying to figure it out. Um, so outside of the mentorship piece that we yeah. typically do, bring, take them under our wings, tell them how this is how your resume should look, this is how you should present yourself to the community. Outside of that, we're also connecting them with amongst our network to help them find um, employment. So for me, I would say um, it's, it's, it's definitely real. 
But I think it's also a brotherhood to also celebrate your successes, right? And so yeah. I can think about even, you know, just last year when I had a child and brothers all chipped in to, you know, give me different opportunities for, you know, for not necessarily a baby shower, but provided gifts and, you know, different money, you know, to celebrate that um, with me bringing in, you know, having my son. But also when you think about um, opportunities and so, when you talk about having like-minded people, it's also like a, having like a mastermind group where you're kind of like bouncing ideas off. So what are you kind of seeing in the marketplace? What are you thinking about from a business standpoint? What are you thinking about from a social economic op opportunity? And so having that opportunity to brainstorm, whether it's from a business standpoint or from just a, a community development standpoint, being able to you know share ideas and thoughts to create new opportunities. And then, I mean, I think that really goes back to our founding. I mean, I think you asked about our history. And so I think that it's, it's important to know that we were the first African-American uh, fraternity founded on a college campus. Okay. And so kind of like being the first and the forerunners in that leadership and, and being a fraternity of leaders is something that continues to, you know, within our fraternity throughout the ages. Given the, we just, sir, at an inflection, what I'm going to consider an inflection point in history. I, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? It's, we are at a point to where the fabric of our nation politically, economically, is just being challenged. Uh, so many fantastic opportunities and so many challenges. Um, some even might consider them existential. Let's talk a little bit about some of the community uh, uh, work that uh, the organization does, particularly the graduate chapter, are here locally in Charlotte. Sure. Well, I, I can start just from the political action um, front. Um, one of <coughs> our four national program is uh, political at uh, voteless people is a hopeless people. So part of our job in the community. Say is that again. A voteless people is a hopeless people. And he <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam was, uh, was, was being a little self-conscious about all of us wearing uh, uh, suits and but, but this is what's happening. That's right. So it, I don't know if you can see it, but vote. That's right. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Aaron Rock, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so part of our role as a uh, political action body of the fraternity is to go out into the community and educate the community on the importance of ex exercising their constitutional right, which is to vote. Yeah. Um, we are very intentional. We, we are not just out there just... Um, um, just telling everybody, come on and vote. We're targeting the black and brown communities because we know that's where the, dis, um, dis, the, the, the real disparity and disconnect is. Um, so we're educating people on the importance of voting. We're educating people on those individuals that are running for office and you know where their platform lies and the importance of no matter what part of the political spectrum you sit on, get out there and vote. Um, so we have partnerships with organizations like Democracy NC and the work that they are doing in the community. We work with them to get people registered to vote. Um, last, last year, one of the things that we did during the pandemic, we got out into the community. We identified different um, um, spots within the black and brown community. We got out there. Not only did we hand out masks, free masks to the community in partnership with other organizations, um, other organizations, but we also was able to get enough people registered, get a lot of people registered to vote as part of that effort too. So that's so, one of the things that we're doing in the mm -hmm. community. So it's like voter education and registration. That's Absolutely. correct. One of the things that's near and dear <clears throat> to my heart and idea is, is I've, uh, uh, one of the last degrees I picked up was information systems and technology. And so we're now talking about systems and organizations that internet work and the sophisticated ways in which they share data, they share missions and so forth. Uh, talk about a little bit about that, about <coughs> how the, this organization internetworks with other community organizations to build a, 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 a fa community fabric or ecosystem. Does that happen or, or let's talk about that a little bit. Absolutely, I mean, partnerships are, are key to a lot of the work that we do um, as, uh, Brother Smith, I mentioned, you know, when we passed out masks, I mean, we passed out over 1,500 masks, and that was a collaboration with Atrium Health. Um, mm -hmm. And so, so many things that we do, uh, we just, you talked about information technology and interconnecting. Mm -hmm. um, last, recently, we started a, a Alpha Encoding Academy, 
And so this is a coding academy for young men and young women as well in grades six to eight. Um, and really exposed them to, you know, coding and that information technology. And that was a partnership with Microsoft and also with Fifth Third Bank. And so there's so many things that we do with our partnerships that will support our educational development initiatives, our political and social action as well, our health and wellness things that we do. Uh, one of the things we're really focused on right now is fighting homelessness and housing. And so we've partnership with Hope Vibes um, and also other churches to support the homeless community. Um, and then also around financial wellness. And so there, there's yeah. a lot of different things that we really tap to. It's really five core areas that we that we really focus on from a programming standpoint. And I know Brother Sibri can also, you mentioned about the Battalion. Um, he does a lot of work with the education. He can talk about some of those things that we do on that front and some of those partnerships as well. Excellent, excellent. Let's talk about that. Sure. But, uh, say the word. <laughs> uh, Botillion. So Botillion, okay. I, I'm one of the co-chairmen along with uh, Brother Brian Sturgis. Uh, the director of education is Brother Norris Williams, who can, unfortunately couldn't be here today. But the Botillion is really derived from a French word for bow. Bow is what we call each of the young men who participate in our program. We have 17 high school students from the Charlotte metro area. Mm -hmm. uh, these are individuals who are aspiring to be mechanical engineers, computer scientists, all types of different jobs. Uh, Bo is just a classy, well-polished, articulate young man, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make that transition from boyhood to manhood. Many of these individuals are 17 years old. They're getting ready to turn 18. They're about to be entering a college campus. They're going into the real world. So this program covers about nine months. We started a few weeks back. We take them on college exposure trips. Mm. Let them see what a university looks like. This is where we partner with our undergraduate chapter. We'll have some of the college brothers, because some of us are a little older. Yeah. They look at us, we don't know the music and things that yeah. they can relate better to, yeah. to talk to them about, hey, this is college life. No one's waking you up. Your mom, your guardian, your parents aren't coming to wake you up. In addition to that, we host various workshops throughout the year, hosted by professionals, sometimes spoken by brothers, talking about personal branding, who you are, how to carry yourself, uh, law enforcement encounters, how to respond appropriately, uh, just being informed, being a good citizen. Uh, then we start talking about careers. We have ser several competitions. One of them is an oratorical to where all of them participate in an oratorical competition. We have mm. a STEM test competition where mm. they compete against each other. Yeah. So some may be stronger in public speaking, some may be stronger mm. in the technical. We offer scholarships for all of those who are involved. So it's a great opportunity for those high school seniors to have that polished both. So maybe they come in a little rough, but at the end of the program, we culminate with a gala to where it's hosted pre-COVID in an in-person venue. We get to celebrate those individuals, their parents, and all of their accomplishments. More importantly, we're trying to infuse in them positivity uh, and also create that network um, to where if they're interested in what we're doing, they can have that opportunity to participate going forward. So it's a great opportunity. Well, gentlemen, we're pretty close to wrapping it up. Uh, but I got to say that the, uh, I came from one of those tough neighborhoods, uh, uh, a few blocks from uh, Michael, where Michael Brown was killed, Ferguson, Missouri, a little all black and just poverty stricken and so on and so forth. And uh, the, the bright light that I remember seeing were black men uh, in, who were um, basically an example uh, to the community, and so what a what a fantastic uh, what a fantastic uh, thing. Is there anything that I missed as we wrap this up that uh, that uh, you might want to uh, highlight or, or bring to uh, focus here? Just kind of wrapping up on the ed education piece, we really want to highlight the positivity. Um, so many times you see the negative of our youth. We have some very successful young men uh, that are in that program. In addition, outside of Alpha Phi Alpha, there are many other fraternities and sororities who are engaged in very similar activity that are looking to give back to the community. It's not about making it to a certain status. It's about how you help others. So I, I believe that's a, a theme throughout the other organizations. Well, we are near the end of the program, and we want to now invite you to participate in something called the Eating of Chocolates. Okay. It comes from Forrest Gump. Uh, you never know... Uh, Life's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. So uh, please uh, take one and, uh, and pass it down. Thank you. And we'd like to invite Thank you, our listeners, to uh, tune in, same time, same place, uh, next week.
for another fascinating edition. And uh, I gotta tell you, uh, you gentlemen comported yourself very well. And uh, for me, who's uh, kind of sitting on a fence about joining a graduate chapter, I, uh, I'm interested. And uh, I appreciate, uh, appreciate your time, appreciate your service, appreciate your love to the community. And uh, pass the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Ben, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. I'm trying to watch my sugar mm -hmm. intake. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I should always talk about it. I have a background in uh, my ex-wife and I home in medical practice. And uh, so, uh, uh, the whole guy began. I'm in Charlotte. I tune in to the chocolate box. We back, revved up. Let's go.